Hi friends, welcome to my extremely boring bathroom. Please excuse the echoes, but we are in this room for a very important purpose, and that is to make this room less lame. Okay, so backstory, we are renting this very old house. When we toured this space, this room was all yellow. So like yellow tiles, yellow toilet, yellow sink, yellow bath, like super retro, kind of awesome, but also extremely, extremely old and worn down. So during the time between our viewing and our actual move in, the landlord completely renovated this space. I mean, he told us he was going to do that and you know, we were happy about that, of course. But the materials that he chose, like no offense to him, are very like standard rental apartment. We've got our gray floors and the tiles, which I actually don't think are that bad, but they are everywhere in this room. We have this beautiful wooden ceiling and a incredibly cold tiled box. So at the same time, when we were moving in, my my mother-in-law gifted us this adorable plant. And I was like, this looks like a bathroom plant. And I've put him since on an upside down base of mine. It's a little dusty. <laughs> and I've been living this way for a few months. Every time I have a pee looking at it and thinking this can be better. So I came up with a very ambitious project that we are going to attempt today. So let's get into it. So the plan is to make a super funky, unique table planter that will give this room a little more personality. I like to make these big pots with coils. So in order to get the shape I want and to make sure all the pieces fit together, I'm drawing a two scale version of the whole piece and then creating templates out of cardboard that will act as my guide. So I put my templates on the wall. Um, this is actually not the templates. This is, these are the templates because you are working with a negative space. Um, these are just the cutouts, but I like to put them on the wall to kind of, I don't know, get an idea for what I'm going on, especially with such a big project like this one. Um, so this is actually going to be made in four parts. Um, I could make this all in, uh, well, I, I would make it in two so you can lift the pot off but um, I can't make it in two because my kiln is too small. So I have to make it in four. My kiln is only 35 centimeters tall. <laughs> Basically we're there with these sections. Like I've filled it up. This is 34. These two sections are 34 centimeters tall and my kiln is 35 centimeters tall. So it's gonna be tight, um, but it, it'll fit, it'll fit. Like it'd be easier if I could build it all in one, but it's not, <laughs> it's not gonna be easier. So I need to make like an insert type situation. So I'm gonna have, with that one extra centimeter that I have, I'm gonna have a little lip that kind of inserts into the lower pot. And hopefully that will be stable enough. If it's not, I can always add glue on the inside because no one will see that part. This part here is the water dish. Um, I didn't need to make a stencil for that just because that's a really simple shape, but I wanted to include it on our little overview. This part is actually going to get a foot. It's gonna be raised up with a little foot with like some holes in the foot, and that way the pot can drain the best. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> so now that we have our templates, we can get started. The first step is to roll out a slab for the bottom of each pot. I'm using one centimeter thickness gauges, so my slabs will be one centimeter thick. You need a fairly strong bottom to support coiling with thick coils. Basically, the goal is to have the bottom and the walls the same thickness. And for these big pots, my walls typically end up being about one centimeter thick. Typically, when you're making bigger pots, you need to have thicker walls to support that shape. So basically how you know how wide these should be is you go back to your handy little thing on the wall. So you want to measure the base of these and then times two it, of course. So this one D is eight centimeters wide. So we need to make the slab um, 16 centimeters wide. So that's how I did that. Now I'm going to let these firm up a little bit. I think I'm gonna let them sit for maybe two hours or something. I don't want them to be too firm but um, just a little bit before we add the first coil. So I'll see you then. Okay. 
Okay, so it's been two hours exactly, but I will, I guess, let these dry out a little bit more because first I'm going to prepare some coils. Okay, we have our coils and we have our slabs. So let's start assembling this. This is the fun part. All of that preparation was like all getting ready for this moment. So we're gonna start assembling these pots. One tool that I definitely do recommend for this project is a scoring tool or rather something to score with. So I'm using this scoring tool. I love these tools. Um, but if you don't have this, you can also use a serrated rib, um, or you can use even like a fork or something, or even a needle tool to scratch. That's going to take a while. It's best to have something with multiple points because we're going to be doing a lot of scratching. So the first pot is actually the top one that we're going to be starting with. This is number D, and this is just the pot that the plant is going to be in. So yeah, when we get started, I'm going to hold up my template. And I'm going to see that the first coil I'm going to put right on the edge on the outside. And we're just going to follow this template all the way up. When you place your coil, make sure you're placing it where it needs to go. So on the outside, and I'm going to be pushing down both sides in order to get it to stick. No problem if you run out of coil. There's nothing wrong with cobbling two coils together. Just blend them at the edges. Okay, and then what we're gonna do on the inside is we're going to smooth this more in. So we already pushed it down, but we want it to be really smooth and well attached. So I'm just using my finger to smooth it in. It's also really nice if you have a rib. I like this small mud tools rib for smoothing these. Okay, now that the inside is smooth, I'm going to start from the outside and maybe it's a little hard to see but there's like there's the slab on the bottom and the coils on top so i'm going to do the same exact thing just blend it uh, in as we coil higher you'll be able to see more clearly how i'm blending on the outside Okay, so we have our first coil attached and now there's still quite some thickness. So the handy part about making these very, very thick coils, we don't want our walls to be this thick. And this is something I learned from one of my very first uh, pottery teachers back in the US, um, is that you start with thicker coils and then you can pinch the coils to make them grow. So you end up like having like a coil and a half of height instead of just like one coil's worth. It's a great way to get some height added really, really quickly. Actually, before I pinch them, I'm going to check which angle I should be pinching them. We're on point, so I'm gonna be pinching in this direction. And this will add some height, but also thin out these walls a little bit. So there we go. Um, I'm not sure if it's visible to you, but it's definitely visible IRL that um, the walls are like about a centimeter taller now. So now we are done with our first coil. I'm going to move on to the next pots. And basically we're just going to repeat this process 101 times. 
make sure you are constantly referencing your template and make sure you have your template is at a nice right angle so that you can set it against the bat and you're not holding it like at a weird angle, right? So you're setting it down and you're following that template all the way up. Okay, so we have finished the first pot. Um, well, not entirely finished. I still need to add the little lip on the bottom. So this is the tray for the water to go in. So the main vase, this one, is going to sit inside of here. And this is also going to be the tabletop. So it's going to function as where the water catches as it drains out of the main pot. And it's going to be the top of our little pyramid thing. I think right now, this looks really disproportionate, but I'm hoping as this one gets wider, it's gonna look better, hopefully. Hopefully I didn't make this one too wide. This is the only one that I did not use a template for because I was like, it's so simple. I don't need a template for it. We shall see. So one thing I'm going to do to kind of clean this up is I'm going to trim the top here and then I'm going to wrap it up in plastic because I don't want to make the lip part until the uh, pedestal part that I'm inserting the lip into is finished. So I know like what size lip to make. So I need to keep this wet so I can still attach something to it later. But what I'm gonna do is just trim the top and probably flip it over if it can stand on its own and then wrap it in plastic. So I'm gonna use my knife for this and first I'm going to just use it lightly and draw where, oh, I should center this. So I'm gonna just lightly hold it against here and draw just to get the line. So this is gonna help me create a straight line. Yeah. And then I can follow the line with my tool. So what you wanna do when you're making a line I mean, have something on a turntable if you have one. Hold this and you see I'm bracing my arm against the table here. So this is really stable. This is like always the same height. And I'm just turning the pot so that, yeah, it's gonna be straight. I did let this harden a little bit. So I let it harden um, like I would in between coils. So it sat a couple of hours. This is making it much easier to have a straight, clean line. Don't worry, we are also going to be um, trimming the outside as well. So right now it's very like bumpy and coily and maybe you like that look. Um, that's definitely not what I'm going for on this piece. So um, I'm gonna shave off a lot of that and that will also make it much lighter than it currently is. But that's actually the last step. So I'm going to wait till the very end to do that. Okay, and then I'm just gonna use my fingers to kind of smooth that transition so it's not such a sharp line. So here's our very organically shaped <laughs> top of our table. So yeah, as I mentioned, I'm going to wrap this up now and just wait until the rest of the pieces are finished before I finish this piece. And any subsequent pieces that I finish before the others, um, I'm gonna wrap up. Yeah.
This is actually super important because they all need to be more or less the same wetness as I'm fitting them together. Because don't forget that as clay dries, it shrinks. So it actually changes sizes. So if I want to fit these pieces together, they need to all be more or less the same wetness. So that's why I'm gonna wrap this baby up. and then we just continue coiling with the others.
The challenge now is to fire them. I've adjusted my kiln schedule since last time I fired with red clay and uh, I'm hoping for a lot better results. If you want to see my red clay disaster, go check out this video. But for now, I just need to play some Tetris to try and get all of these pieces into as few firings as possible. The hope was that I could fit them into two firings. So it's what I was worried about and um, I just put the shelf back in because I'm not going to be able to get them in together. I have a couple of small things that I can put in with it but it's really, it feels like, I don't know, kind of a waste. It's fine. We're going to fire them separate. There she goes, fire number two. with how this project turned out. I hope that you love it. That's going to be it for this video. Let me know what you want to see me make next. Next week's going to be another episode of Pottery at Home, so definitely stay tuned for that and I'll see you then. Bye friends! Bye.